and a tough pill to swallow for the Miami Dolphins. Another first-round exit now for Mike McDaniel. That's two playoff appearances and two first-round exits. Really never had a chance in this one. 26-7, the final Kansas City Chiefs at home. Really dominated. There was a little glimmer of hope when Tua connected with Tyreek Hill for that long touchdown pass that made it 13-7, but... I, I beg your pardon, that made it 10 to 7, but after that, the Chiefs really never looked back. Patrick Mahomes, 23 of 41 for 262 yards, had the one touchdown. Pacheco on the ground was just steady all night. He never really busted uh, anything uh, completely, ba breaking the backs of the Miami Dolphins, but he was steady all night with 24 carries and 89 yards and a touchdown. Rasheed Rice, well, he stepped up in a big way with 130 yards and a touchdown. And the Dolphins' defense, in a lot of ways, played pretty well, holding the Chiefs to several field goals as opposed to a couple of touchdowns or drives that could have ended in touchdowns. But the, the score tells the story for the Dolphins' offense. Just did not show up. Tua had zero ability to pass the ball down the field. The running game was not there. And the Chiefs' defense has been really good all season. I know normally this Chiefs team, the defending Super Bowl champions, people think of Mahomes and the juggernaut on offense, Travis Kelsey and so on and so forth. But you look at the numbers, this Chiefs defense all season has been the strength of the team. In fact, second scoring, second best scoring defense entering the playoffs. Tua, just 20 of 39, 199 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mostert just was able to compile 33 yards on eight carries. And I mentioned Tyreek Hill had the lone source of offense for the Miami Dolphins. So season comes to an end, and if you watch this game, if you didn't, either way, you look at the final score, I need your one-word reaction to this game. 26-7, to the weather was a big deal, the fact that the NFL chose to postpone the Bills-Steelers game and elected to continue with the Chiefs and Dolphins games despite what many weather experts said, dangerously cold temperatures, that was a lot of uh, discussion pregame, but at the end of the day, both teams had to play in the weather conditions, and the Chiefs played much, much better than the Miami Dolphins. Drop your one-word reactions to this game. As always, I've got some instant reactions for you, and flat out, the offense did not show up in this game. And yes, Tyreek Hill had the one touchdown catch, but the body language was a little bit disheartening from the Miami Dolphins. Uninterested. Sure, it's cold, but again, both teams have to play in this cold. The play calling lacked creativity. Where was Jalen Waddell? Where was Devon Achan? Where was Raheem Moster? And again, Tyreek Hill had the one catch, but outside of that, did not look particularly sharp. And it starts and ends with the quarterback. As the face of the offense, he's always going to shoulder a lot of the blame. And Tua has been a no-excuse guy all season long. And I think he has a lot of questions to answer. And I've been his biggest fan. I've been a Tua apologist. And still, when you look at a team losing their final three games in the way that the Dolphins did, there's going to be a lot of question marks moving into the offseason. So 20 of 39, 199 yards, just not going to get it done. Had an early interception that led to a field goal for the Chiefs. But any way you slice it, this offense was not good enough and Mike McDaniel's offense, while it shined at the beginning of the season, they were scoring points in bunches and taking advantage of bad teams. They played good teams. They were not very sharp. And that has been the narrative all season long. And the Dolphins did nothing to change that narrative. So that narrative will define the 2023-24 season for the Miami Dolphins. Want to thank our presenting sponsor today, Game Time. Game Time is your one stop shop for all your ticket deals to live events, especially last minute ticket deals. In fact, they guarantee the lowest price on any last minute ticket deal. That's why you use Game Time. And now, with football season ending, we turn our attention to the Miami Heat. If you want to get to a Miami Heat game, you got to use game time. Maybe you want to get out to the pitch and watch some soccer as well. And you want to see go, go see Messi play. You got to use the game time app. And even if it's last minute, look, I've used the game time app when the fellas and I, day off, said, let's get out to the ballpark. Baseball season's coming up. As, and we use game time. They guarantee the lowest price possible. And again, 
We're offering you $20 off your first purchase because we love you and we care about you. When you use that promo code FINSCHAT, it's on the screen there, FINSCHAT, P-H-I-N-S-C-H-A-T. When you create an account, $20 off your first purchase. Now, terms do apply, but take the stress out of buying tickets to live events. They're supposed to be fun, right? Not stressful. That's where game time comes in. Lowest price guaranteed on last-minute ticket deals. $20 $20 off your first purchase because we love you and we care about you. We'll put that link right in the description and the comments of today's video. And download the Game Time app today for the lowest price on last minute ticket deals guaranteed, including $20 off your first purchase with that promo code FINCHAT. Now, when you talk about the offense, you have to talk about the quarterback. And Tua has been under fire quite a bit this season, especially as it relates to the narrative of playing good teams. And when good defenses show up, it seems like Tua has lacked the ability to make plays and change the game in favor of the offense. And that's exactly what we saw again against the Kansas City Chiefs. There was no spark to the offense. It was pedestrian at best. The seven points are a testament to that. There was no running game, but of course there was no passing game. Tua did not look sharp. And this is a win for all the naysayers that seem to spread hate towards Tua because he, at times, has not shown up in big games, and this was another example of that. And again, chalk it up to the weather, chalk it up to the injuries, chalk it up to whatever you want. Tua and the offense were not good enough tonight, and that's why the Dolphins lost to the Chiefs 26-7, to and that's why the season is over. You look back at the regular season, you, we knew home field advantage was going to be so crucial, so important for this Miami Dolphins team And you look back at games they let get away, like the Monday night game late in the season against the Tennessee Titans, and even the final game against the Buffalo Bills. They let those games get away, and because of it, they had to go on the road, and it's another first-round exit for the Dolphins. In this game, I also think you saw some costly penalties. And I don't think you point the blame at the officials. I always think that's a loser take. But... When you're on the road against a team with a superstar like Patrick Mahomes, he's going to get those calls. And you have to be smarter than that. That's part of the game awareness. And Christian Wilkins, to call him out specifically on that roughing the passer penalty, the game was not out of reach at that point. And the roughing the passer penalty from Christian Wilkins extended the drive. The Chiefs got more points on that drive, and eventually they cruised to the win. Now, again, I'm not saying that penalty cost the Dolphins the game at all. Please don't take that out of this. And in fact, I don't think the the officiating was egregious by any means. Don't take that out of this either. I think the Dolphins made costly penalties. And when you play a really good team like the Kansas City Chiefs, they've had their struggles this year, but at the end of the day, they are the defending Super Bowl champions. When you play them on the road in a hostile environment, when the weather factor is against you as well, you got to be sharp. And the Dolphins just were not sharp tonight. So given that, I want you to grade this Dolphins performance against the Chiefs. A, B, C, D, or F, let me know in the comments. I think even despite the loss, the defense at times brought their A game, but overall, offense did not. The offense was like a D, defense maybe about a B minus, C plus. So overall, I'm just going to go with a C minus. But let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate everybody for chiming in on this one. As the Dolphins' season comes to an end in disappointing fashion, Miami loses their last three games. want to remind everyone that even though the season ended, you still got to subscribe to the channel because we're bringing you daily Dolphins off-season content now. Now we turn our attention to next year and how Chris Greer can improve this roster to avoid this bitter taste that we have. Yes, the season ended. That stinks. That is hard to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow. But the Miami Dolphins franchise will continue on, and this becomes a crucial offseason with big names that need to be extended, whether that be Christian Wilkins, Xavier Howard. We'll have you covered on Dolphins breaking news as the offseason continues on. That's why you subscribe to the channel. Do so at youtube.com slash Dolphins News, and we appreciate everybody for subscribing. And that's how I want to close out today's video. Remember this feeling. Let it fuel you. And we've all heard the cliches, you know, champions are made in the offseason. The Dolphins are going to go into this offseason with a loaded roster, a very talented roster. You look back early in the season, a lot of people would tell you this is the most 
talented offense we've seen since that Rams team led by Kurt Warner, the greatest show on turf. Now, obviously, as the season progressed, it didn't exactly pan out that way, but the potential is there for this Miami Dolphins team, and you got to remember this bitter taste in the offseason to let it help you fuel your motivation for moving forward next season if you're the Miami Dolphins. And same with Mike McDaniel as the head coach. Right now, that narrative is being written that he's a flashy guy, he can put up big numbers, but when it comes down to it, his teams aren't going to win the big games. Two of the same thing. He said he was keeping receipts. That's fine. Go out and prove those haters wrong, and it starts in the offseason. It starts with the NFL draft, and that's why you subscribe to the channel because we'll be with you every step of the way. The Dolphins season comes to an end 26-7. to so I want to leave you with this question. Was it a successful season? Let me know in the comments. Type Y for yes and N for no.